Uh, 23, you still live at home. Don't know if anybody, any young guys in the front, any you still live at home? Young guys at the front, a guy up in block D said yes. <laughs> <laughs> 23, you live at home. You don't need to pay rent and stuff like that, but you pay mental rent, don't you? <laughs> I've always had a good relationship with my parents, especially my dad. Knowing you're, knowing you're seven, eight, nine years old, as a young guy, traditionally, your dad is your hero, isn't he? He's your role model, he knows everything you want to follow in the guy's footsteps, you want to emulate the guy. Then you get to about 12 years old, you realise your dad's an arsehole. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's a perfectly natural stage in adolescence, discovering that your dad's a bit of a knob. That's just what happens. <laughs> Normally happens on Christmas Day. It involves building something. I'd be sitting there working patiently away using the instruction manual. My dad would come in. See, my dad is of the old school where the use of an instruction manual is viewed as an admission of homosexuality. <laughs> that can get to fuck. Where's the claw hammer? <laughs> and once you've realised your dad's an arsehole, you can kind of use it to your advantage. And I realised my dad was an arsehole in 1998. Right? 1998, you never had Sky Plus or Sky HD. It was just Sky. And you had fancy free options. You could get it via a satellite dish, via a cable, or you knew a guy that could get you a box. <laughs> you know one of the guys that can get you a hold of anything for 40 quid? He <laughs> can get you a Nissan Micra, 40 quid. He <laughs> can get you a set of golf clubs, 40 quid. An iPod Nano, 40 quid. 50 quid in cash, 40 quid. Everybody's met a dodgy bastard, right? 40 quid. <laughs> the satellite dish, that was a, a kind of working class option. No, satellite dish. You want a satellite dish. You want your neighbours to know you've got Sky TV. If you're paying £25 a month, you want your neighbours knowing that you're better than them. <laughs> now, we had Sky through a satellite dish. 1998, you could be watching Sky TV. Don't know if anyone remembers old school Sky. You could be watching Sky TV in the living room television, but you could also go upstairs to the bedroom TVs and watch Sky, but only with the person in the living room. <laughs> <laughs> only what they were watching. I don't know the intrinsic technical explanation as to why that happened, but it just did. <laughs> Saturday nights, me and my dad watching match of the day. It gets to the kind of shite games. And I say, right, I think I'm, I'm going to go to bed, Dad. Good night. <laughs> and he continues the charade. And he says, are you going to bed, son? Oh, that's fine. Good night. And there's that mutual father and son. We both know what the plan is here. <laughs> Casually exit the living room, nice and slow. Don't even stop off in the kitchen for a look in the fridge. <laughs> Eyes on the prize, right up the stairs. Bedroom TV switched on, go to channel number six. That's when you see what he's watching, number six. <laughs> TVs are synchronised, but he's in control. <laughs> a few minutes go by and he's still watching match of the day. I'm thinking, oh, that's fine, he must be giving it a, a couple of minutes. You don't want to make it too obvious. <laughs> <laughs> 
Nice and smooth. He's done this before. Nice and smooth. <laughs> Another few minutes go by. I'm thinking, come on, stick to the plan, Andy. <laughs> <Come on. laughs> You're better than this, come on. <laughs> Looking at the bottom right of the TV, waiting for the numbers to get typed in. <laughs> the numbers that could make or break the evening's entertainment. <laughs> waiting for the numbers, go on. Play your numbers, give me your numbers. Nine, that's good. <laughs> He's played a nine. Could not have hoped for a better start than a nine. <laughs> <laughs> Zero, five, the ten minute free view. Jackpot! <laughs> You're a dirty bastard, Dad, but I love you. <laughs> I used to watch a programme called Get Your Own Back. <laughs> Big show in the 90s. I'll explain the premise of the show to the more mature audience members. It was hosted by a guy called Dave Benson Phillips. <laughs> Big Dave, as you can see, a fanny magnet. Right, Dave Benson Phillips. <laughs> <laughs> in the show, they'd get these kids on who wanted to get their own back on a family member who had done something to annoy them. And it was always like, you know, they'd tell the story about what their family member had done, and then they'd bring on the family member, and everybody would boo. It's normally a guy, and everybody would boo, go boo. <laughs> How could you do that, boo? <laughs> <laughs> and then they'd gunge the guy, pour, cover him in gunge, and go boo, serves you right. So you get gunged, boo. And that was it. Revenge. Revenge had been and had. Revenge. It was always really, really shite stories. <laughs> but I'm here. I'm here to get my own back on my daddy. Because <laughs> <laughs> we were in the car and he, he farted. <laughs> and it was absolutely disgusting. <laughs> And he wouldn't put down the window. <laughs> I used to watch this every day. <laughs> Just one day, so I'm hoping for something a bit more hard hitting. <laughs> I'm here to get my own back on my uncle Ronnie. <laughs> Cause he's a pedo. Everybody's going boo. <laughs> Gunge that pedo. Gunge that beast. When's the last time you turned on the TV and seen a pedo gungeon? <laughs> Dogs as well. I feel uneasy in the presence of dogs. No dogs in the traditional sense. I mean, dogs, right? No, you get a difference. <laughs> in Scotland, we call a dog a dog. We take that O and make it a U. A dog, a dog. It's a slang term, but it's also a social implication in that you get dogs and you get dogs. <laughs> Do you know what I mean by that? You get, oh, look at that wee dog watching that fucking dog. <laughs> No one of their big council house terriers with a name like Sasha. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody brings it on a bus and it jumps on top of you on the bus and you shite yourself. <laughs> and the owner's going, don't worry, she's only playing with you. Don't worry, she's, she's just a big softie. <laughs> and the dog's going, you know that's a lie. <laughs> this isn't over. I like animals, just feel uneasy amongst dogs. I was watching a documentary 
about animal testing, about toiletries and cosmetic products that get tested on animals. And it was showing you these horror stories about animals that get badly burned and disfigured. It was pretty, pretty distressing shit, right? But I'm quite a positive guy. I'm watching this, thinking, what about the, the happy stories hmm? about cosmetic tests? What about the tests that were successful? <laughs> what about the toiletries and beauty products that made it to the market? I want to turn on the TV and see the two chimpanzees in a laboratory cage somewhere saying, you're smelling good, Chico. <laughs> Is that Lynx Africa? <laughs> Boom, chicka, wow, wow. <laughs>